Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. So during my Arrow Seeing Red video, I asked you to submit all your questions about the big WTF reveals and the rest of the season. So I picked 10 of them to answer in this video with one bonus question. Also, if you're finding me for the first time, just because this season of Arrow has been so amazing, I'm doing a special bonus countdown series to the finale. So each Wednesday, I'm just posting a new bonus video. Be sure to subscribe to get everything and feel free to leave me suggestions for what you want those videos to be about. So let's talk some Connor Hawk and Destro. Careful for spoilers for everything through episode 20 if you're not caught up yet. But here we go, question number one. Rose Lily asks, will Oliver tell Thea that he is the green arrow now? I think that that person that he tells in the trailer for the next episode we saw actually is Thea, but they could be doing something a little bit different. It could just be a misdirect because Thea is talking about being sick of all the lies and we know that Merlin is coming back soon, so she could just be talking to him and Oliver could be talking to someone else, but I think that Thea will know the truth by the finale. I mean, pretty much everyone in Oliver's family figured out his secret identity and almost all the main characters know with the exception of Quentin, so he's either telling Quentin or he's telling Thea. Question number two. Tim asks, do you think that Roy will be fixed or healed before the season finale? Yeah, I think pretty much all the Mirakuru drama is going to be done before the finale, or at least, you know, in the first couple moments of the finale. In the episode description for Streets of Fire, episode 22, it mentions Caitlyn Snow making a big breakthrough at Star Labs, so they probably get the cure in that episode and use it. But that won't be the end of it, obviously. I think in the finale, episode 23, Slade's army will be gone, and it'll just be Team Arrow versus Team Deathstroke. Just the core main characters. I think the big theme this season, or at least the second half of the season, has been full circle. So think back to when Oliver and Slade started. They were on the island by themselves. You know, gradually new characters came in and eventually we got all the new Team Arrow people. Slade got his team and then the army. And now a bunch of them obviously are going to either go away or die like they already have. So these last couple of episodes, we're traveling back to the beginning. So the last couple of moments of the finale, I expect it to be just Oliver and Slade, you know, just like in the beginning. So I'm also saying that yes, I expect them to go back to the island in the finale. Question number three, the PTMD3 asks, who is Connor Hawk? Good question. So in case you don't know, I'm just going to actually go based on the New 52 universe. Connor Hawk is the son of Oliver Queen and Sandra Hawk. In the New 52 comics, he's also the Red Arrow, but Everyone is kind of expecting this new kid of Oliver's to turn out to be Connor. They could be doing something different on the show and gender bend it, and it could be his daughter, but I think I should also mention that it would be wasting too much of an opportunity for them to just make the child a normal non-comic book character. But even if it does turn out to be Connor, I'm not expecting Oliver to just, you know, start training him right away. Remember, the kid's only going to be like six or seven years old. So basically, this child, you know, we're hoping is the implied heir of the Green Arrow legacy. You know, someday when Oliver dies or retires, this child will take up the mantle. Just like some of the Robins in the Batman comics have taken up the mantle of the Bat for temporary periods of time. Question number four, Manuel Cortez asks, is Oliver's son the next person who has to die, according to Slate, or will he live and Oliver train him? Otherwise, why bring the issue to the show? So there's actually a couple reasons why they could be dumping this info on us right now. First off, I definitely think the child will figure into the finale. You know, otherwise they would have waited to introduce him in that season three cliffhanger. You know, the moment at the very end of the finale. That doesn't mean that Slay will try to kill him, but he's definitely done his homework with Oliver. So I think he knows about the child and will just, you know, hang him, so to speak, over Oliver's head. That could either be like Slade doing the same, you know, pick who dies moment using Felicity and Oliver's son, or he could just straight up kidnap him and take him to the island to raise him as his own. So a couple of things have to happen in the finale. One, we have to go back to the island somehow. And two, someone is definitely going to get kidnapped. Question number five, Monica Payne asks, what was Moira going to tell them about Malcolm before Slade attacked them? She was just going to tell them that he's still alive. Merlin really just said that he wanted Thea. You know, he wanted his daughter to be with him. So I think he's going to offer to take her away. If he does have some other secret plan involving Thea, the show hasn't revealed it yet. He's not coming back till episode 22, so whatever happens between daddy and daughter will go down in that episode. Question number six, Laxus Dreyar asks, do you think that Oliver or Thea will take up Moira's run for mayor? So they could totally do the, you know, Oliver Queen mayor of Starling City story from the comic books. It would be an interesting wrinkle in, you know, whatever the big main story of season three is. Mayor and daddy by day, vigilante by night. I'd rather see Diggle or someone else be mayor, but I wouldn't be surprised if Oliver takes the job. I don't think that anybody expects Brother Blood to survive as the mayor into season three. I think Laurel's definitely going to kill him in the finale. Question number seven, Sergio asks, 
Who's worse at keeping their secret identity a secret, Oliver Queen or Bruce Wayne? So I would definitely say Oliver. I think pretty much his entire family and almost all the main characters have figured it out, except for Thea. Barry knows, everyone at Argus knows, and even some of his biggest enemies like Merlin and Slade know. Brother Blood does not know, which I actually think is pretty funny. It just tells you how important that character is to Slade. Batman's secret identity has been figured out by various, you know, comic book characters and, you know, special villains in the past, but generally that's been pretty rare. Question number eight, Bobby asks, what is your thought about them creating a new shared DC universe with the movies and TV shows? And what do you think they should include in that? So David S. Goyer said something really interesting. He's mostly known for writing a lot of DC comic books, but he's the one who's writing that Superman vs. Batman movie right now. He said that Warner Brothers, who owns all the movie rights and most of the TV shows and DC Comics, just isn't quite ready for a unified system like Marvel. You know, not enough of the right people in charge, people at the top, are on board with the idea. The problem is, is that you have this army of producers making movies and TV shows and writing comic books, and they all have to be on the same page. It has to be like a thing from the top down. So like the CEO has to make it his mission, and then his underlings and his underlings, all the way down to the people that are actually writing these scripts. Whenever they do get it figured out, I think it should be just like Marvel's version. You know, all the studio movies and Netflix shows and TV shows on broadcast TV should exist in the same universe. I think there are a couple things they should leave out though. Like the comic books should just be their own thing on the side and all the animated shows like on Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network, those should be different too. Question number nine, Brad Gilbert asks, does killing Moira give Merlin and Team Arrow a reason to unite? You know, definitely, but I think the real thing that's going to convince Merlin to fight with Oliver is going to be Thea. You know, Thea saying, you know, as my father, if you want to have a relationship with me, please help my friends and my family defeat this, you know, big threat of Slade. So for Merlin, I think, you know, because of Thea, he's just going to have a temporary truce with Team Arrow. You know, he doesn't hate Oliver, but as Stephen Amell once said, they have unfinished business. Mostly just unresolved issues from season one, like Tommy dying and The Undertaking. Question number 10, Dansky Games asks, do you think the last person that Slade said has to die is actually himself? So that's actually a really important thing to consider. I don't know the whole plot of the finale or anything, but I think it would be a really awesome twist, you know, if Slade during the process of the finale starts to realize what he's done and is just so overcome with grief that he asks Oliver to kill him and just end it all. If you remember in episode 20, Roy asked Sarah to kill him just because he didn't want to go on living anymore. So if that ends up happening with Slade's character, killing him would be like an act of mercy. So I don't think Oliver would do it. You know, he still hates Slade for what he's done. And I think he's going to force him to live with that. And one last bonus question. Red Arrow asks, do you think that Oliver's child in The Mother will be featured on The Flash show this fall? But yes, only in episodes that invoke people from Arrow. I don't expect them to be cast as regulars on The Flash show. I think we're only going to see them whenever Oliver visits The Flash or whenever The Flash crosses over with Arrow. That doesn't include, you know, moments when they reference those characters and we just don't see them. Like, for instance, they've been talking about Barry a lot since episode 9, but we haven't seen him yet. So, thank you so much for submitting questions for this Q&A. These are always a lot of fun to do. So, my next bonus video is going to post Wednesday before episode 21 airs. Be sure to subscribe to get it. And feel free to leave me suggestions for my next couple of bonus videos. Remember, I'm doing one for each of the final episodes of Arrow this season. Right now you can click here for my top 10 Team Arrow moments this season so far, and you can click here for my review of episode 20. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you guys tomorrow, high fives!